An air parcel initially at rest will move from high pressure to low pressure because of the pressure gradient force. However, as that air parcel begins to move, it is deflected by the Coriolis force to the right in the northern hemisphere or to the left in the southern hemisphere. As the wind gains speed, the deflection increases until the Coriolis force equals the pressure gradient force. At this point, the wind will be blowing parallel to the isobars. When this happens, the wind is referred to as geostrophic wind. Winds in nature are rarely exactly geostrophic, but to a good approximation, the winds in the upper troposphere can be close. This is because winds are only considered truly geostrophic when the isobars are straight and there are no other forces acting on it. In these conditions, just errant found too often in the nature. In the friction layer, the turbulent friction that the Earth exerts on the air slows the wind down. This slowing causes the wind not to be geostrophic. As we know, the slowing down reduces the Coriolis forces and the pressure gradient forces becomes more dominant. As a result, the total wind deflects slightly toward lower pressure. The amount of deflection the surface wind has with respect to the geostrophic wind above depends on the roughness of the terrain. Another important aspect of the airflow around high and low pressure centers is the vertical movement of the air, usually much lower speed than the horizontal wind. At low pressure centers, air rises. At high pressure centers, air sinks towards the surface. At the surface high, also called ridges, wind spirals slide outward away from the center. This outward flowing air must be replaced by air from above, causing descending or sinking motion near high center. Also generate a fair weather or very little clouds because there is this descending air. The opposite is true of low pressure areas, also called trots. Wind expires slight toward the center at the surface and when wind vents, vents upward, producing ascending or rising motion. The rising or sinking motions are interlinked with the underlying cause of the pressure system itself, often surface temperature. Over warm surface areas, the air, the air heats, expands and rises. This can often spawn a large low pressure trot. The opposite is true of heights. Over cold surface of air cools contracts and draws and overlying air downward to form a high pressure ridge. Over land areas this relationship is special obvious. Mid-latitude continental areas such as Central Asia and North America becomes very cold in the winter. This can raise our pressure to 1050 millibars or more a very strong high which dominates the wind weather of these areas. The opposite is true in summer when the surface warming causes the air to expand and form low pressure centers. Over air Asia, the seasonal change in surface air pressure drives the monsoon wind system. And you learned before the difference between land and water and the continentality effect. That is very um, explain much better the high and lower pressure systems. At the most fundamental level, the global winds are set in motion by different differential heating of Earth's surface but sunlight. That means the tropics are warmer and polar areas are cold. This differential heating gives rise to pressure difference and, therefore, the pressure gradient forces that compels air to move. Ultimately, as we saw early, the moving air had redistributes heat from areas of surplus to areas of deficit. Remember the vertical motion of the air at high and low pressure scents described at the previous sessions? At the equator, the warm surface causes low pressure and raising air. At the poles, cold air produces high pressures and sinking air. If the Earth did not rotate, if it was covered only by water and the rotating axis was not tilted, that's a simplistic model, 
this will describe a global circulation, so air would rise at the equator, flow at high altitude to the poles, where it would sink and return to equator along the surface, forming two gigantic circulating cells. On Venus, which does not rotate and is excess enough to produce appreciable Coriolis, this is, in fact, what happened. On Earth, however, Coriolis make the situation a bit more complicated. Air rises near the equator, but rather than flowing all the way to the poles, Coriolis forces cause air to sink about 30 degrees north and south latitudes. This vertical motion of the tropic is so well defined that its name is the Hadley cell. Raising air in the Hadley cell along the equator produces deep clouds thunderstorms and rain in a band of low pressure called the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ. So every time I talk about ITCZ from now on, you can make the reference to Intertropical Convergence Zone. Sinking air near the 30 degrees latitudes causes high pressure areas called the subtropical highs. The highs produce clear sky and calm winds in the latitude band, sometimes called the horse latitudes, which lie just north of the Hawaiian island and dominate Hawaiian weather. Coriolis makes the airflow at the higher latitude even more complicated, but in general air flows out of the subtropical high polyward along the surface, then rise again at the polar front, which wobbles around between 50 and 7 degrees latitude. At the polar front, air rises producing cloud sky in a band of bad weather, sometimes called the subpolar low. At high latitudes, the circulation is similar to the Hadley cells, except much smaller. Air sinks over the poles, the polar high pressure, remember clear skies, cold air, then flows equatorward and rises again at the polar front. Global pressure bands are related to the vertical circulation of the air as discussed above and are shown as a high 30 degrees and the poles and low equator and 47 degrees latitude. The surface pressure bands not only determine the climate at their location but also drive the horizontal surface winds. Understand this concept will help you not only in this class but in understanding the weather whatever you travel in the world. The tree cell model helped to explain how the general circulation works, but didn't represent the reality due to the surface conditions, land versus ocean. As you know, the world is not covered by bells of high and low pressure, as the model suggests, but by semi-permanent cells. Those cells change intensity and geographic position due to seasonal variations. During the winter season, Low pressure system over oceans intensify due to the wa water being relatively warmer than the land, and high pressure systems are stronger over land, colder than water. <coughs> Oceanic high pressure is weaker in the winter and intensifies during summer months. Water becomes relatively colder than land, and low pressure over land intensifies as the land gets warm in the summer. So two oceanic lows intensify in the North Hemisphere, the North Atlantic Iceland low and the North Pacific Alation low intensify and they weaken or disappear in the summer. The subtropical high pressure in the North Atlantic, the Bermuda High, dominates the Atlantic region during the summer and becomes the Azores High in January. The same happens in the Pacific area, the Hawaiian height dominates in July and moves southward in January. The rainfall associated with ITCZ shifts north in July and south in January.